As we noted yesterday, ICP has entered a period of relative calm following its sharp retracement from the early November highs around $9. This trend continued over the last 24 hours, with Wednesday's close seeing ICP at $3.70. This sustained stability suggests a deeper phase of consolidation as the market continues to absorb the previous volatility. While price action remains subdued, a subtle shift in market engagement is becoming apparent. Yesterday's trading volume at 130 39 million stayed within the low range we've observed, significantly below the 30-day moving average of almost 500 million. However, we saw an encouraging uptick in social dominance and mentions rising slightly above 6,500. Average engagement also climbed to 70. This modest increase in community chatter, even in a quiet market, could signal renewed interest or emerging narratives worth watching. If you want to keep an eye on these metrics by yourself, make sure to join my Discord. Link in the description. In in terms of network metrics, yesterday brought a welcome stabilization in supply dynamics directly addressing a key concern from yesterday's report. Recall the significant influx of almost 300,000 ICP into circulation I highlighted yesterday. Over the last 24 hours, this metric has normalized drastically, with slightly less than 9,000 ICP added to the circulating supply. This is a much healthier figure, indicating that the large supply event we observed likely wasn't a sustained trend. Net staking saw a positive increase to 12,500 ICP, meaning that the newly minted supply from yesterday was absorbed by internet computer long-term believers. While the amount of ICP burn dipped slightly, the consistent staking activity provides a solid foundation for network participation. The global conversation around data privacy and sovereignty continues to intensify, with Switzerland, a nation renowned for its strict data protection laws, taking a decisive stance. A recent Tech Radar article reported that Privatim, the conference of Swiss data protection officers, urged public bodies to abandon cloud services from giants like Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. The primary concern stems from a lack of true end-to-end -end encryption and the potential for data stored even in Swiss regions to be exposed to US authorities under the US Cloud Act. This act, which can compel software as a service vendors to hand over data, directly conflicts with Swiss standards for privacy and sovereignty. The Swiss authorities also criticized the insufficient transparency of traditional cloud providers and the complex long chains of external service providers that compromise data security. They advocate for solutions where governments can encrypt data themselves and providers cannot access encryption keys. This environment presents a significant opportunity for decentralized cloud solutions like the internet computer which is itself based in Switzerland and inherently designed for end-to-end -end encryption, user ownership of data, and transparent tamper-proof operations. The Internet Computer's architecture, functioning as a decentralized cloud, aligns perfectly with Switzerland's rigorous data privacy requirements. This regulatory pressure could pave the way for exciting collaborations between ICP and privacy-focused Swiss entities like Proton, which has already established a strong reputation for security by offering client-side encryption and adhering to Swiss and EU infrastructure. Such a partnership could not only validate ICP's capabilities but also provide a powerful compliant alternative to big tech's centralized offerings, further cementing ICP's role in the future of secure data. Bobby O critically examined the broader blockchain industry, arguing that many projects are on a path to nowhere due to their failure to adopt a truly end-to-end on-chain model. He highlighted a widespread issue where the industry, despite acknowledging the problems of Web2, has largely shied away from publicly discussing and implementing this superior architectural approach. Bobby pointed to major layer ones like Cardano and Ethereum, suggesting they often create Frankenstein applications burdened with numerous dependencies and scaling solutions rather than delivering genuine Web3 experiences. Bobby emphasized that ICP stands alone in its ability to build full web applications entirely on-chain. Unlike other models that require additional components for storage, computation, privacy, and security, the internet computer's architecture is self-sufficient. This distinction is crucial, as ICP applications offer inherent user ownership, robust security without the need for firewalls, and are unstoppable and tamper-proof. He questioned why such a simplified, secure, and truly decentralized model is being avoided at all costs by the industry, speculating that financial incentives and a reluctance to challenge existing power structures may be of that play. This unique architecture extends to critical financial components. CloudStrike emphasized the internet computer's unparalleled capability with chain-key Bitcoin. Unlike traditional 
bootstrapped Bitcoin solutions that rely on centralized custodians, trusted multi-sigs, and carry significant bridge and rug pull risks, ChainKey is fundamentally different. It represents native Bitcoin, leveraging ChainKey cryptography to sign real Bitcoin transactions without intermediaries or bridges. CloudStrike noted, ChainKey Bitcoin is literally one-to-one -one backed by actual Bitcoin, secured by a decentralized subnet of independent ICP nodes that collectively hold the private key using threshold signatures. This architecture, which he described as eliminating the need for wrapped assets, offers full on-chain auditability and algorithmic minting tied directly to Bitcoin, making it a truly trustless and innovative solution. Bobby further elaborated on the implications of this industry-wide avoidance, suggesting that many Layer 1 foundations might be knowingly guiding projects and users in the wrong direction. He argued that while such entities might benefit financially in the short term by promoting their own scaling solutions to infinity or mutually beneficial partnerships, this strategy ultimately misleads users and developers. If foundations know there are better options for certain use cases, but they are knowingly deciding not to pursue those options, why would they do that? Hinting at a corrupted industry where the financial gain of a few overrides the delivery of genuine Web3 solutions for the many. Bobby praised Definity Foundation's technical delivery, stating, Caffeine is hands down with no close second the best product in this industry by orders of magnitude, and predicted an exponentially widening gap between ICP and other blockchains as the self-writing internet continues to accelerate. The ICP Hub's Egypt team, for instance, is already demonstrating this efficiency by building solutions for Cardano directly on ICP, potentially saving millions that would otherwise be spent on less secure and more complex alternatives. The synergy between artificial intelligence and the internet computer is proving to be a potent force for the future of decentralized applications. Snassi detailed multiple compelling reasons why ICP is the ideal platform. Firstly, ICP is uniquely capable of running AI directly on-chain, a feat famously demonstrated by Dominic Williams, opening doors for unprecedented use cases. Secondly, ICP ensures the safety and integrity of of AI-related data, which is a significant upgrade from Web2. Snassy highlighted a third, potentially most crucial aspect, ICP's suitability as a deployment platform for AI agents. These agents, often simple scripts that outsource intelligence to large language models, require a reliable, tamper-proof, and scalable environment. On the internet computer, an AI agent is guaranteed to keep running even during broader Web2 outages, and its code remains immutable. ICP allows agents to scale by creating new canister smart contracts, supporting complex agent networks where secrets like API keys can be securely shared. These agents can also possess a wallet for micropayments, enabling them to finance sub-agents or pay for services across Web2 via HTTP outcalls and other blockchains through chain fusion. Snassi believes that AI agents can become a real killer use case for ICP, amplifying the network's existing strengths. This vision was echoed by Definity's chief business officer Pierre Samad who spoke at Binance Blockchain Week about the evolving super app economy. Samadis succinctly captured the essence of this shift. With Caffeine, anyone can build any app by talking to AI for their own social network, driving the hyperlocal app market and economy. This statement underscores a paradigm where AI serves as the builder, consumers drive innovation, creation is instantaneous, and the internet fundamentally writes itself, all powered by platforms like the internet computer. The ICP community recently buzzed with anticipation following a post from Blockchain Pill, hinting at the potential return of content creator Jerry Banfield. Banfield, a cherished figure who had retired from active content creation, expressed interest in a collaborative video, stating, Hey Alex, how would you feel about doing a Zoom call with me, recording it, and then putting it out as a video on your channel? We could talk about whatever you wanted, and I think it'd get good viewership for you. It would be my first post-retirement video. This news has been met with enthusiasm across the community, eager to see the ICP legend back in action. The question now remains, is this a one-time event or should we anticipate a more permanent return to content creation from Jerry Banfield?